Hello everybody, this is Paul with Fruitful Trees and today I'm at an amazing place as you see this river behind me. From what I just learned today, one of only two natural rivers here in South Florida or Florida in general, or in North Florida is connected to uh, the ocean here. Uh, but that's not the goal of my, my video today. I just wanted to show you that. I am at another amazing tropical fruit forest. I found this uh, channel on YouTube with this fellow that was uh, making great educational videos and uh, it always looks like on video that people have such a bigger property than they do. People say the same thing about me, but uh, it's not as big as I thought it was, but it's more amazing than I thought it was. And it's so cool to be here. So I'm gonna show you guys around and give you a tour today. The link to that YouTube channel is below this video. Uh, and he has so many different things. He has this strawberry tree here. Uh, he's not here like me. My goal is 100% edible plants. I've taken out good smelling plants pretty plants. I just want edible stuff. But here, his goal is to have more of a mixture. He wants to have edible stuff, but he also wants to have things that look beautiful. He has some ponds and, and some other things. And he also wants to create shaded areas and, and so on. And he, he just, he, he's talented, especially with grafting. He has so many grafts that he's put multi-grafted trees and stuff, and it's really cool. So I asked him about the river and how it affects his trees and other challenges that he has in growing uh, trees here in South Florida and other cool really things. And what's really cool is he's not doing it alone. Uh, him and his wife are doing this together. And uh, so it's, uh, you know, twice as better because they have twice the amount of uh, passion and things to do. His wife loves growing roses and things like that. So uh, she has little areas here that have taken over and he's uh, uh, very considerate of his wife. He's not just, uh, selfish like many of us that so we just want to grow we want to grow we don't want to hear from anyone else uh so that's not the way to do it it's good to be considerate of other people of your neighbors of your your family me my children love certain fruits that i don't like i don't like really egg fruit but my children love them so i grow egg fruit uh so we want to keep those things in mind uh and this property here he's been here about four or five years and uh he's he, he's learning and experimenting and he has this really cool thing that I would love to do here. I'm about to go in this and we're gonna be doing, showing you this more here in a little while. He built this trellis for passion fruit and he has a bunch of passion fruit growing everywhere. That is just so cool. And, and it, it, you, could, you could do these things and sometimes you would think they're expensive but sometimes they're not. So we're gonna show you a tour today of this property and with Satya, and again, his YouTube channel is below, so check it go. out. Okay, everybody, here we are in North Miami with Satya and his farm, and uh, he's gonna show us. There's another house farm, so to say, a food forest, and Satya, how long have you had this uh, place? Four years now, and when we started here, it was like a hard pan rock, rock uh, table, and uh, we had some pots that we had from previous apartment we were renting, and I wanted to put the trees in ground and when I started to dig like after this this much layer it's just hard the the, the peak would not even go in so that was our challenge and four years has been in into building the soil we didn't plant those trees for a long time and those that were planted initially by mistake had to be moved because they were doing poorly in that rock pen so last four years we learned a lot into but main focus was soil health how to improve the quality of the soil Okay, so it's been a learning experience and uh, show us what you got growing on here in your... <laughs> okay. Right, so how much land do you have here? This is uh, three-fourths of an acre because we also have the house in it. So, and then we will have walking paths and places to sit and rest. So three-fourths of an acre we have to adjust for fruit trees and you know, everything. Now you're in a re residential area as we take a look around. Do you have trees in front of your house? Uh, you mean outside the fence? Yes. I planted some trees, uh, trees that uh, people wouldn't want to steal. Okay, uh, so, you, so you do think about that when you plant, okay. Yes, I, I have a tamarind which people don't know what it is and uh, I also planted a star fruit but it's a seedling so you know it won't grow until it's really tall. So I think, uh, and then there's an ilang ilang. It's a fragrant one. I, I want people to feel good when they pass by. So, you know, the fragrance comes in the afternoon when they walk over. So, Great. Now, before we start and see the, what trees you got in the ground here, I see there's a uh, water right behind you there. Uh -huh. So tell us about that. Are you on a river? 
Yes, this is Oleta River. It's a brackish water, which means that there is salinity in the water. So um, I experimented a lot in what grows because, you know, when we have a small lot, you want to make the maximum use of what you can plant. So I thought there's so much space by the water. Why don't I plant? Uh, things didn't do well because, you know, saline and salinity in the soil doesn't go well with all the trees. So I had a loquat that I had to move. Mangoes though, um, if you look at there, it's very close, probably like four feet from the water line, um, the river line, and it, it's doing good. And lo uh, longans are doing okay as well. This strawberry tree looks like it likes um, saline in the soil, so it's not really, it's fruiting year after year, haven't had any problem. Obviously, coconuts, if you have it, you can plant those as well. <laughs> yes. All right. Go ahead. Show us around what you got. Okay. So this is the backyard. Um, as you can see here, this is the strawberry tree. It serves dual purpose. And I think uh, our garden, we want to make trees that will serve dual purpose as well. You know, that's, that's the whole thing because you can't be like a farm here. It's the middle of the residential and it's also a meditation garden. So you want to make it look beautiful, but you also want to make it edible so that you know it serves the boot so it's edible birds like it we have cardinals come here all the time and you know i like it sweet it's if it gets you can try one as yeah. well yeah for those of you that don't know uh this is a strawberry tree it's actually not look what we know is a strawberry they're yeah. round like this here to me they taste like captain crunch cereal <laughs> and uh they're just absolutely delicious but the tree grows almost like a weed it's a big yes. tree and, and uh, we decided yeah. to make like a sitting area down there because it's a nice shade and you know florida you don't get shade that much uh, it's sun all the time so this is a nice arrangement we did it later on uh, first this is three years old this tree and luckily for us it hasn't grown up it has grown wide um, okay which is the purpose back here you will see this langan hasn't done well but uh, I think different species. This is a Bukyu langan that was planted a year ago, growing well. So you have uh, two longans here, yes. okay. This is a sugar loaf. People ask, is sugar loaf a dwarf? I don't know, but it has grown almost like a carry mango. I don't, but I may trim this branch and maybe this one that, that's kind of open up a little bit for air, but it's kind of like a dwarf is growing. It flowered a lot. Uh, and they say that when it is like you know unless it's mature enough it doesn't hold the flower swells that's what happened all the flowers drop probably male flowers I don't know but uh, looks like uh, and the other thing is that um, it is true we we did start with mulch you know if you see here this mulch has already turned into soil but uh -huh. there was mulch and then we let the everything grow here People have a misconception about grass and weeds as well. For us, it's just multi-species together. Um, I have been researching a lot about soil health uh, and made one of those videos as well. Uh, it's like uh, trees do not compete. Sometimes they, they do compete for sun and I'll show you how they even grow away from sun, uh, from other trees to get more sunlight. But down here in the soil, actually they might even help sometimes with diseases, with deficiencies that, you know, they may secrete some chemicals through the roots that may help the other, other roots um, interact. So there's a lot of science that is going to uh, come about how the roots of the plants interact with each other and help each other. So I'm letting it as it is because I don't want to do anything. It's, it's growing well. There's some dollar weed. I don't know who it is, but I'll let it grow. The grass uh -huh. is also doing good. Now I see you have a label there. So you label your trees uh, yes, that this way. Is okay. what, so initially the nursery plants came with like, uh, you know, they yes, come the tag, with it. And yes. then we find out that they it's already the girdling. Yeah. So, and uh, so this is good. Um, Probably we made it more than a year ago. It, it's it's holding well so far. Okay, and what's your goal with the trees? Do you want them to grow as tall as they can, or do you want to keep them small? What's your goal? This is this is my. I will keep it as a kind of. I want shade around here. I want it to grow here as well. So I will leave it as it is. Um, I will just make sure that it doesn't create fungus situation. You know, too thick in the middle. I'll, I want to make it like a huge canopy tree. Okay. Um, some dragon fruits. Uh, there was a there was a tree that was cut. The Australian pine tree, the invasive one of the invasive species around here, and it died. And we decided to use the dragon fruit. It's a 
yellow variety. It so doesn't fruit it now on your dragon fruit and also on your sugarloaf tree and all your trees, do you have irrigation here or? No, uh, we did mulch. See, uh, because of the soil and the fact that we don't uh, irrigate, we did put mulch. But once it got the kick start, which is like in you know, the first two months, I was watering once a week, deep watering. I think deep watering works better than daily irrigation for like five minutes. Deep watering, two, three gallons of water every couple of days for one month and then once a week for next month. Uh, also, I try to plant my trees this, this is the season once the rains start so that you don't have to worry about watering them. I will Very show you point. some of Very the trees that I, that I planted outside the gate. They are doing perfectly well. They just mulch well, rains come. <laughs> That's a very good point. To, if you're going to plant a tree, everybody, the best time to plant it is during rainy season. So it could really get established. Good point. So I see some red hibiscus here. So there are some roses. It's my wife's rose garden. This is a rose project. These are different varieties of roses that's not commercially propagated right now. We have a friend crazy about roses and you know he had certain varieties that he couldn't grow himself and when he gave us one rose and that was doing very well here, he was surprised and he said, why don't you take all my roses and once you grow them and they start to flower, he just needed to see the flowers, the how they flower and how they do. So uh, it's like a gift for us but they are doing well here. They like dry, um, elevated, cool sun, and I think that's what we gave. But the soil down here is more acidic. I had prepared this whole soil for Jabuticabas. <laughs> there was like a, a very acidic soil down there, but I couldn't plant because I thought that maybe the mangoes will grow a little bit. They will give shade, partial shade to Jabuticabas. They're not growing as fast and it, sometimes it happens like you think to prematurely and you know it, it, you might have to wait a couple years until the shade comes. So I have more mangoes down here close to the river. This this one is another project that's close to the river and initially it suffered. I think everyone's lemon meringue tree suffers in, when it is young and I saw her talking about treating with a lot of uh, different micronutrients. I never treated with micronutrients and I just let it be. If it's suffering, it's suffering, it's not giving fruits. Then all the leaves start to get better. All the new leaves are much uh, better now and I think I'll just leave it be. I'm not going to trim it. This is also for shade project. I want both of these trees to like give shade here so that you know it's... This is my kind of, you know, I after grafting I figured out that you always have to choose, you know, you buy gra science from places. Sometimes friends gift you and you don't want to lose. There's just two signs of certain variety. You don't want to lose them. So many mistakes I did in the past. Now what I do, I find the most vigorous tree that grows all the time, grows, 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 and it never fails any grafts. It's like you, everything it's taking, all the grafts it's taking, anything I graft on it, it takes. It's a lemon zest, which they say it's, uh, it's not. The, the tree is lemon zest or the Zion's lemon zest? No, the tree is lemon zest. It okay. grows very fast, very huge. So I'm using it for grafting different varieties. I may not keep these grafts, but at least now I have a source. I don't have to ask a friend or go to a certain, like, you know, cellar nursery to say, again, it's a waste of money. So always graft to a tree that is vigorous. You can, once it takes after one year you can take that graft and graft to you can you know practice on other ones that you like. But now I saw a recent video of yours and you spoke about it was a great video about yeah. how the, you made many mistakes grafting uh -huh. and then you learned and you started yeah. using the buddy tape instead yes. of the, the yes. alpium tape. I, I did so many experiments on it because my problem was uh, moisture and rain moisture penetration and rotting inside it starts to rot. So what I do these days is just you know uh, I like to do the side graft, but I started doing the cleft as well, but mostly you will see side grafts. Grafts, side grafts can be done on bigger, if you have a smaller scion. Um, and what I do these days is just put a body tape so that it's well secure and then just put these on. Now that's the body tape. Do you use the body tape on both parts here? Yes, I do. And when you cover the top, uh -huh. do you cover it completely or yes. do you leave it open? I all? cover it completely because you see here, you see this one, this one, it actually pushes through the, and um, I can show you more of there. So um, these are white piri grafts that they took very easily. This one was done a month ago. Nice. 
and I have a Karen Michelle here that I got from Alex. So how many how many uh, graphs are on this tree? <laughs> this one has Edward, Karen Michelle two, White Fury three, ST Maui four, Isu one five. Five and I'll that is that is it for now. Uh, I, I may not keep all of them, but I know some of them have equal vigor with lemon zest, like Edward grows fast, Estimawi as well. This one maybe not, but it's a rare variety that nobody propagates these days. It's like a seedling of lemon zest um, that only Walter Zill has, still the big tree. So I wanted to keep it as a just like a museum thing and see how the fruit <laughs> does. Yeah. Um, so this is our riverside. It, 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 this was made a month ago actually. We did it ourselves, me and my wife, the whole thing. Uh, it was just a slope here and the river was being cut. This, is, this was being cut and actually this was the river-like area, but it was washing out everything. Every time a speed boater would come, it would wash more soil. So we thought it's a good uh, you know, river view. Plus, I, we may start planting some trees that give shade here. Like yeah. you know, there are uh, saline-loving anonas like Anona salzmaniae, which is, which is a good anona, good tasting, and it loves, it's grown into the coastal areas. I also have a tamarind growing here, and tamarind does very well in saline soil. So, you know, down there it will already catch the river, that water, so it will have salinity in the soil. So that, that's working well. This is a sweet tamarind. I have to cover, you see, this is because a lot of iguanas are there and I, I don't have time to catch every iguanas and everything. We have cats, but they only catch this big. After after this big, they don't catch, they just leave them alone. So once it grows at a certain height, iguanas don't care. They only care about the ones that they can catch with their mouth and when they So Got a coconut here? Yeah, I'll leave this coconut. I probably will tilt it more towards the river. I don't want the shade from the coconut. I do, I'm okay with the fact that it grips the shoreline, you know, its roots, but I do not want the shade from it. But it grow, if it grows in there, how are you gonna get the coconuts? No, this is just just for the looks of it. Okay. No, yeah, I'm not, there are other coconut trees that I have. I have two coconut that, uh, trees, sorry, I don't think they're called trees. Are they called trees? So I have two coconuts <laughs> that, um, that are, maybe 10 feet tall and they're loaded with coconuts. Okay. Those actually give enough for us to make coconut water and you know, we, we also make coconut milk at home um, because we don't drink regular milk. So. Good, good. So right. uh, I have planted a sapajila here, so I don't know how, they, how it will do. You see a little, a little bit because it came from the shade directly into the sun. What variety is it? And this is called butterscotch. So nice. I, I don't know, it's an experiment. I know butterscotch is a high, de like you know, Right now, people want it. Everyone wants it. But I'm I'm doing it as an experiment. How it does in a saline soil, uh, brackish water, and also I don't know much about whether it's wind because when the wind, high wind comes, it's like it comes from that area. So I don't know if it will need protection from it. So this here on the right, you see this is this I call my dwarf mango garden, and uh, I try to collect trees, mango trees that kind of can be kept compact and can be kept dwarfish. Uh, that's my plan. So this here is a uh, Jehangir mango from India. I have an Arka Nilkiran that actually had a fruit hanging first year but it dropped after a certain size. A Lil Jam uh, planted last year. I wasn't expecting it to fruit or anything. But the uh, Hanikis has been more than a year now. So it oh wow, that's looking uh, great. Kind of it's loaded and... Um, it is, wow, he must have 10 or 20 mangoes on that yeah, tree. And, wow. Uh, it's, uh, it's, I, I think they take time. It's, uh, so now when you planted these, did you, do you, how far apart are they? No, I didn't the, measure them. You didn't measure them? I didn't measure them, but I would want to eventually uh, want to walk so that I will need some pathway to walk around. This is a Namdak Mai, uh, which has some fruits, but it's, it is root bound. You, I could see it was root bound. I got it from Pine Island Nursery, and in those days, uh, you know, it, this was one of the first trees that we had. Uh, I just didn't know what is root binding at that time. You know? Now, from the fact that it's root bound, uh -huh. will that affect the fruit or just as growing of the tree? It has grown slowly, and not only that, it, it has looked... Uh, this is the first time you can see it had deficiencies a lot and I think that's why I'm so much into soil and root health these days because it's people show pictures of deficient mango trees and nobody asks 
what the root is doing like is the root bound is the soil good people immediately say oh it looks like you have manganese zinc boron deficiency but those deficiencies come because the root is not able to absorb so maybe you have to check what the roots are doing this is the first year actually it seems like even with the root bound it has gone out or something it's it looks like it, it is having a lot of buds and it is growing this probably is seven or eight years old and it wow. shouldn't be this dwarf um it has some some mangoes here they have not split so i don't know how they will taste it we'll see okay. this year this is pickering pickering you don't okay. see any mangoes because i have heated them uh, all along the, <laughs> the anything that's hanging like this that's the raccoon comes and takes if if i put them close to the stem the, it doesn't know it's kind of hiding between the leaves same here julie there are a lot of mangoes here which i'm hiding like probably one two three four five six seven eight mangoes so in a small tree this is the first year this julie is fruiting Julie right. doesn't do good, they say, unless it's close to the coastline. So, you know, I'm, this is a cotton candy, and I don't think it's a dwarf. I'm hearing that cotton candy is actually a, a medium sized tree. So, it will be a, a challenge for me. Probably I would want it to grow this way, but then it doesn't want to. You see why? They all like sun. Doesn't like that there is a banana there. <laughs> it's okay that banana is there, but give me more sun. Like, I want to grow this way. <laughs> So, and uh, uh, bananas as well. Uh, How many bananas do you have? I have four or five different varieties. So this is a Mysore uh, banana, which I know it gets very tall, it leans, but I like the taste. It's like smallish and very sweet. And I have a, this is a blue Zava. Um, you know, the color looks a little bluish, but I think the raccoons started to eat it. Um, and this is a dwarf, uh, probably it's a dwarf, it was, it had fruits here, we already harvested its insides, so it doesn't grow tall than this. Uh, here is more like, a, I'll tell you, so this is a dwarf Hawaiian which planted last year, together with Julie, I think they are from the same, I think dwarf Hawaiian probably is a Julie seedling, I, I need to research, but uh, they're kind of uh, dwarf is. This is Neelam, which uh, is probably our oldest tree, four years old. Um, so it is fruiting the most as well in terms of amount. And this one is what I'm doing it for many purposes. So this is a, this was just our walkway, you know, there was nothing. So we decided we like passion fruit. Where do we grow? We can either grow on the fence with the neighbors and then started to climb over, go beyond the fence, and they were upset that, you know, they have their own ornamental trees that were destroying. We couldn't cut, so it was a problem. So we thought we have to keep the passion fruit within the compound, but also give it enough, uh, you know, space so that... So this trellis idea came here. Um, and... Uh, wow, so fruit wow. <laughs> what you see, Kangen. Wow, great, that uh, is so awesome. they're not ripe yet. Uh, but and you built this trellis? This is just for a cattle panel. We, we don't have down here, so we had to go to Laksahatsi actually. Uh, so this is like a 4 feet by 15 feet. It, they sell it flat and you just bend it and it becomes like this. To hold them, I have uh, rebars there and just to, for the ornamental sake, my wife wanted to make it look nice. So we have like, you know, this... Um, oh, but this whole thing shakes. How is it with the wind? I never had so far. It will be an okay. <laughs> yes. Too. But it is a windbreak for a lychee behind, which yeah. we had planted a lychee there. See, one mistake, I, I know you recently went to someone who said that there was a mistake. We never put any weed killer. We don't believe in all this. But we did do, bring mulch from outside. Now we don't do We have a mulcher. We bought a small chipper that chips all our branches. We stopped using mulch from outside. FPL was delivering us mulch for free, trucks, and we found out that one of the mulches had uh, some kind of, uh, you know, pesticide or something there that all our leaves, wherever we put this mulch, started to have this uh, discoloration. Uh, but the lychee gets windbreak from the passion vine yes. as well, so it's, it's kind of working well. I have some zone pushing going on here. This is a chimpedak, which is uh, like a jackfruit, but it's a little more tropical jackfruit, which peels easily, like, you know, it doesn't have latex. Trompedak. So that's not a true trompedak seed, is it? Which one? That one. Yeah, yeah, this is a chimpedak. So where'd you get that? 
It was sent by someone from Hawaii. Okay. Yeah, so, uh, you know, just the seed was sent and it has grown uh, probably two or three months old. Okay. Uh, so, going back here, this is a guava tree that I like so much, but it looks like it's not a, it's not a, at least not a precocious variety. It probably will start producing after five years of being in the ground. Hasn't produced. Uh, once a tree doesn't produce early, I try to graft something else so that while while it's still waiting, some other varieties will. <laughs> so I'm trying to grafting an orange sorbet here to see what it does. But so oh, that was a guava mango. Okay. Yeah, gu guava mango. Yes. With an orange sherbet graft. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Um, so this area is open because you know we are a meditation garden. We on Saturdays we invite people to come for meditation, one hour, two hours, and whenever there is uh, you know nice. No sun and everything, we do it here, especially in the winter. Summertime, we do it back there where the shade is. Uh, so that is Neelam. This area is, uh, this is, um, I don't know if the iguanas like it, but this is Abiu. I have oh. two different Abiu varieties here. This one is from Zeals, I don't know, but that one is from Australia. It's oh, called. Oh, two in here. Yeah, it's an E4 or Z4, some one of those varieties from Australia that's supposed to be big. It actually looks very nice. It's growing nice. The seedlings, yes. Yeah. Uh, Cac mango plus uh, I have graft of Sienta Leon, so they're pro both vigorous upright growers, so they'll be together. And plus, I want a little bit of shade here. I want this to grow. Uh, I have more mangoes there, creme brulee, and see the the thing is that people are scared. Like you know, mostly you see, and you know, we all have our own practices. I don't mind. I'm keeping an open mind. Maybe I'm wrong, but I like to see the ground covers here first. There is mulch. And after months, everything starts to take over. This, there is here chia seed growing, ground covers, dollar weed, kalalu, which you can eat kalalu, the, it's like a spinach. So, and the tree is not deficient. So I don't know, I think they all can coexist. This is a grumi chama, it hasn't fruited yet, but I, I hope next year. Uh, Karambola, which doesn't look good. Something is not good there. I haven't checked what it is, but. <laughs> Our raised beds, this is a, uh, what is it, my wife's, these raised beds, uh, this is uh, arugula, yeah, from, but this is our raised bed, we eat from our own garden, you I know, mean, morning veggies, everything, salads, everything comes from our own garden. Our, another seating area, which, you know, it's, it's, it's a nice thing to have. The sun, so this is more like a nice. We grow all the vines, and these are all flowering vines. They have nice fragrance when the flowers. So there's rosebud, jasmine. This is salandra that gives big moon flowers are also there. Um, and there is one more species, um, Stephanotis, which is called. It's like a Hawaiian vine that. that Did you put this trellis in the ground. You built it? Yes. We built this whole thing, the concrete thing as well, just me and my wife. Wow, very nice. <laughs> Everything. We do not have a garden or seed. Like, that's why we do not have, uh, we, we, we used people in the beginning. In South Florida, it's a little difficult. People start the project and they, they vanish. They probably start <laughs> some other project somewhere and uh, we couldn't trust it. We, two things for us, we, we will do it ourselves so we learn how to do because, you know, it's life. You need to learn everything. So come here, this is a, another productive uh, mango. This is Super Julie. I have some Valkyrie grafts growing on that didn't flower. Only this branch is Valkyrie, but the Super Julie um, have a lot of fruits hanging. I don't think they're ready. I checked this morning whether, but I have not grown this variety before, so I don't know what uh, it looks like. When it's, I usually see, if I don't know, I looked at the stem and I try to bend them and if it doesn't come up to here, it's like, okay, it's not ready right now. This was what started as a mango area, and I had I didn't measure them or anything, so they are all over the place. And this area was where where the the mulch was, so you can see a lot of monstera leaves are having the same problem. Lot even the ornamental that Cardiline has this, and this also had started to get the same. Everyone got the same disease, so I had to trim it pretty well so that you know I, I, I what tree is that this was orange sorbet it didn't produce orange. I don't know why um, because others you see the malika here it's loaded with fruits the so fruit malika yes malika yes uh, yeah it's everywhere like it's hiding here some 
and the peach cobbler also is doing very well normally people say that peach cobbler is shy bear but ours this year decided to uh, do pretty well Glenn had some fruits but didn't really produce a lot and this is strange thing I, I found out that other people also have this problem that sometimes it produces these small fruits that they just ripen as they in their own size and never become big in size other producers ugly berry I don't know how much of the effect that is I see the trees are trying to grow this way and you know this is a huge black olive uh, another thing it's not our it's the neighbors so you you um, have to have con restraints when you are in the city lot you can't um, you know you, you have to find that three four of an acres might not always be three fours if there is a huge tree you are again restrained with you can cut back anything that's on your side that's what he said I wanted to cut the big branch so that we don't have to every year cut because it grows fast as well uh, but and there are bigger ones which I could reach this much and then the top one started to grow. I need to cut like a tree cut, a professional yeah. ones can do that. So come this side. Uh, this was a sweet tart that didn't fruit this year. But then interestingly, I had grafted Venus onto sweet tart and Venus has some fruits. It was just one year old graft. And then I grafted Phoenix as well there because I don't have space. And Phoenix also. So I don't know what's, what's with the sweet tart. Probably it will take a couple of years to start producing. So have Phoenix and Venus. This is a seedling tree. I, I did a video a couple of days ago on this uh, and um, it is probably a Glen seedling which is close to Glen but actually the, the taste is not as washed out. Glen taste gets washed out. This one was better than Glen. Wow, and you call it Super Glen, right? Not this one though. Oh, Super Glen one. is a smaller in size, a little okay. roundish. That is much higher. So that's a Glen seedling though? Yes. Okay. The now, Super, yeah. Glen, Super Glen is a big tree that's that's on our okay. um, friend's house. And that uh, is like, you know, it's very complex and concentrated sweetness. It's, now, do you have a lot of grafts on this seedling or no? No, I have one Phoenix growing here, just in case. Just in case if the seedling turned out um, bad, I would chop the whole thing and only keep this. This is a phoenix graft that was done more than a year ago. It's okay. like a bark graft. It's, I, I don't know whether I'll keep this tree or not yet. I do need to clean up a little bit because you see how humid things are here because uh, the air cannot flow well. Plus this areca behind, it's, it's another thing that's blocking the airflow. I think we missed that one. No? Which one? This one? No, this no, is no. A, uh, that's a peach cobbler. Oh, we got that? Okay. Yeah, we got this peach cobbler. No, peach cobbler is loaded from all the sides. It's a, it's a, I have some, something for sale. Anything for sale, I keep it there. Um, so What's this here? This is, this was a cock shell. Uh, I, I ate some cock shells I didn't like, but this year I ate one cock shell, which I liked a lot. So, but then this is a, this up to here, I think it's cock shell. And then it, these are all grafts of sea crest mango. I like secrets more than cocktail anyway, so it's... Okay, and you said you have some, some mangoes for sale here. Uh, no, there are jackfruit seedlings, jackfruit seedlings. and there's some like, you know, um, sugar apple seedlings, some veggies, some tamarinds. Okay. It's just uh, anybody wants to come and, you know, buy something when they come visit, like, you know, okay, so it's just seedlings, 10, ten fifteen dollars A lot of papayas, because they're, they're easy, like, you can easily make a smoothies with banana, both from the garden so it's something I think um, grows easily I thought I would just plant it randomly this is M4 uh, it, it's kind of dwarfish but it's also loaded I tried to I tried the technique of rotating and it did come out but it seems like varieties that are late don't go by that technique just keep them hanging there as long as they because they it didn't ripen well so it also has a lot of mangoes, but this is its second year in the ground. Normally, some people don't want their trees to produce. I think it's just, it knows what it's doing. I'll just <laughs> leave it to me. So this area, I have uh, jackfruits, a couple of jackfruits. You see their approach grafting? You asked me how you do the jackfruit. So uh, it's just an approach. The easiest way to graft, I found out, is if you already have a known variety, you just, you just tie them together like this. Just tie them together like this, okay, come good. after a month, this will all be fused and you just cut here and then cut this one. So it will just be 
There will be one so plant. So you skin on the inside of them, right? Nothing I did. Okay, nothing. It, nothing is done because jackfruits grow so fast, they'll push against each other and it, they will fuse. The whole thing will fuse. Then you just need to cut here and, you know, it, it's a... Interesting. Graphic. So here's the, the, the Bangkok lemon, which is an amazing jackfruit, by the way. Yeah. And this is a seedling? No, this is a grafted tree, which is called uh, TMR, the morning red. Okay. So what he did here was he just tied these together. And they'll fuse together themselves, really. Yeah, and then, wow. you know, there will be fruits coming from this, will be huge later on in life, and the wow. fruits of Bangkok. And what about, what about this? Eventually, do you cut this stock off? Or what you no, no, I, I will cut the top part off, because the top part after this will be TMR, but the bottom part is Bangkok lemon. But what do you do? You get this in the ground eventually? This is a pot you can take out. So what you do is you cut here, right? Uh -huh. So this whole thing you can take out once you cut here. I see. Once you cut here, the tree will be on one side. This pot you can take wherever you want. And then you have two suits. You choose which you want. Obviously, you want to choose the TMR because that's the variety that you want. So you can cut the bottom here? No, no, you cut here, this one. So okay. This variety will get this variety just by joining them. Because oh, normally. So you're, you're grafting onto this yes, one, not normally this one. Normally, you would have to take a sign from here and graft there. It may take a minute, but right now it's actually. Uh, there is no way anybody will die, it's just they will fuse with each other. And then you can cut and then... Nice. So, um, this was grapes that my wife... I'll show you some grapes that are growing. They're not ready yet, but... You know. Here's another jackfruit, this one's uh, another yeah, Bangkok one lemon. A Bangkok lemon grafted, which I'm, I'm doing the same thing with a black gold, which has a good established root system. So the grapes... Uh, can be grown in South Florida and we have made a trellis for it. You, initially it was growing there and they didn't like it uh, because you know there are closures and it's more for ornamental. Oh, this we is got a noni. noni tree, yeah. it's more medicinal. We make fermented juice from noni uh, and it's like you know more for health than wow. uh, fruit. Did you that plant that tree? tree? Yes. Wow. The fruit doesn't taste that well but... No, uh, it doesn't smell good either. Yes. <laughs> So papaya is here, I have an avocado area as well here, so it's kind of very, very dense, but it looks like uh, everyone is doing well. This is an avocado from Leaf, uh, he said it's a variety called Barbara that's not been released, I don't know. What's it called? Barbara. Barbara, okay. I don't think he released it to anyone else. Um, one jackfruit is there, that's a seedling variety from Australia called uh, Amber. I'm. There are like three jackfruits together fused because I want the root system of three jackfruits but have one tree so that you know it will have a no deficiency, there will be better root system. Um, I have, this is Lula avocado, growing pretty well, it seems like it grows vigorously. There is a seedling of Oro Negro that you know it's growing well and Maria B avocado, so it's like a forest here. <laughs> and behind this um, bananas, there is our compost pile that we are composting everything. And more of a, uh, you know, what they call like a fermented compost. Sure. Soil pile, we were filling up the riverside. Remember I told you that it was like a lot of slope, so we used a lot of soil to fill up because we couldn't generate, we have to depend on soils. This is the dragon fruit post that we made. I don't know, we're not professionals, but we wanted to climb and then use this as a coming out. Okay. How do you think? Five feet. Uh, I already have it, but I still need to plant them. I need to research what kind of soil they like. I think they like rich organic soil, not so deep, but it has to be well draining. Uh, so we'll see how it goes. It probably has space for like eight dragon fruits if we use the middle one, um, but we'll see. Um, at least there is no shade here. This oak is a little bit shading. So you see this Otaheite gooseberry. It was fruiting in the pot when we bought three years ago. And once we planted, it grown in size, but it has never fruited. So I think sometimes it happens that it's good to plant trees together, but make sure that sometimes fruit trees don't fruit if there is not enough sun. Mm. So if you come this way, uh, there's another pathway. Same with mulberry. I love this Pakistani mulberry. I, I wish there were some uh, 
there, but it doesn't fruit as much because it's under a huge oak and it itself likes full sun, so it's not fruiting as much. This is my Anona and Atimoya area. So I have like small Anonas planted here. This is a, this is a Saramoya. Uh, it's, it's like a, it's called Saramoya. I think it's like a, one of those hybrids. Saramoya? Yeah, have you heard of it? No. no. So uh, there is a Atimoya here, Pet Pak Chong. This is another Saramoya. I have some cherry moyas planted. They don't do good in pots. I want them to grow and then I'll graft something onto them. I have two Atimoyas that are multi-grafted uh, there and then behind there as well. So I want them this, and there's already a sugar apple the, that's already established here. One sugar apple is here, this one. There's some there. I haven't had time to hand pollinate them. And you know, Anonas, they, they need to be hand pollinated to be productive. So once they are all in one place, it's easier to collect pollen and you know do that. So I kind of group them in one place. But with the oak, I don't know how much oak will allow them to flourish here. <laughs> it's just an experiment, you know. So. so another experiment I'm doing here. It used to be a raised bed that uh, we didn't like. So I'm making three rows here. One row here will be of uh, papayas that will grow tall and give kind of partial shape. And this row will be of Jabuticabas, which is a little bit lower so that it will be less, uh, you know, more moisture will be there, which they like. I already have a blue grape there planted, um, but I don't like that it's too much in the sun. So I want some papayas to grow a little taller and give some dappled shade. It's just uh, space management. You have to do that in a small space. <laughs> Uh, so all these pots that you can see is like in your future, like one high, one low. Wherever it's low, we'll get more moisture. Wherever it's high, it's okay with less moisture. So that's how I'm doing. Uh, that is a jujube tree. We had a big fruiting one that was by the neighbor, which was constantly growing. I had to cut it down. Another restraints when you close to, you know, yeah. people who don't yeah. like fruit trees. What's this here? Uh, this was a Fairchild mango, which was growing very fast, occupying a lot of space. And I decided that I will make it like a mango, uh, Indian mango cocktail. So there is a Kesar mango already grafted here. There is a Sindhu, it's another Indian mango variety, already grafted. And I want to get one more variety called Himsagar that's, uh, that does very well in the, our you know, humid South Florida. I don't have the budwood yet. The one that Alex has um, is not the true Himsagar. It's like a mixed up in the USDA. So I'm waiting for someone who has been growing the true one that's brought directly from India. Um, hopefully in a couple of days. So back there I have Lokwats. Funny thing uh, about Lokwat is they like drought. I don't know, I, or they do very good in drought because we don't water. This is a higher part of our garden. Papayas are suffering, but uh, lokwats are doing okay. You can see there's one lokwat there, another this multi-grafted, that's also multi-grafted lokwat, this is also both. It has Vista White and Big Zim varieties, that one, and this one has Champagne and uh, Pelouse, Pelouse or Pelouse. This is a Barbados cherry with nice berries, but uh, birds like it a lot. Also, fruit flies like it a lot. <laughs> First year, there were no fruit flies. Fruits were very tasty. Second year, fruits start to disfigure, and then they don't develop that taste. Uh, it's very difficult once the berries are in such, you can't bag all the berries, so it's kind of like, you know, you, you don't know what to do. I just leave them, and you see them falling everywhere. And they're a bit sour when they don't ripen well. Coconut cream behind you. It was, it had more fruits. I actually started to pick them up and uh, they didn't ripen well. So I think another fruit that I at least have to see that the color has starting to change like a yellow shoulders, then I can pick. I wish I could do the whole beautiful coconut cream, but they eat. Once I left a carry that was changing color, next morning gone. <laughs> I even hid in, behind like, you know, how, like, you know, I could lift this and hide behind the leaves like this, like this, you know, and yeah. now it's hidden. You still, just by the smell, the raccoons have that sense of smell they find. Found. 
so coconut cream is like this it just grows everywhere but you know it seems like if you don't prune it 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 fruits well uh, this part is our front side driveway we use this small space because it was it had full sun and you know we wanted to plant pineapples here so we made a raised bed um, and planted it like bromeliads they're doing okay um, I have a butterscotch that probably I'll put it put it for sale sometime but right now it's just growing guavas uh, my wife likes guavas so you know that's her here is the extreme case of uh, multi-species gardening so this is all butterflies um, uh, flowers you know it's uh, different kinds of flowers so roses white flowers and you can see some butterflies so it's just made because you need pollinators in your garden not just fruit trees someone has to pollinate them bees and butterflies so the ground cover as well it's like more of a attracting to uh, you know, butterflies and bees you can see some pollinators around so this is all a ground cover it's a perennial peanut it's it also fixes nitrogen where else uh, that's we, edible too I probably is yeah, I because it is. it's a yeah I didn't show you the guava area you want to go there sure this is a Indian mango I planted it's called Alampur Baneshan and it has a graft of sonpari so half of the tree the whole half is sonpari mango actually I had two sonparis it's ripening um, very beautiful shape they have almost like Alfonso mango shape so we'll see how they do a couple of Angie's were there I have three or four ripening right now and we have probably maybe two or three more one two two or three more here but uh, I think I liked Angie's flavor more than Carrie's, um, but we'll see. My wife likes Carrie more, so I, I was thinking, could, should I top work that Carrie tree? And it's like, no, no, don't touch that tree. So, okay. so this is our guava area. It starts with, a, it's, this is a lemon catli or lemon guava. And you see all different guavas are here. We have a Ruby Supreme. Then there is an Indian variety that came from India, they, they don't propagate it here, but it's very creamy, a white creamy. And then there is a seedless from leaf, I don't know which kind of seedless it is, but he said it's a seedless, it was small one year, and it's growing now, it hasn't fruited yet. And then there is a, the one with all the air layers that you see, many people want that, that's another like a giant uh, crunchy one that a leaf gave me, so... Um, and then the Barbie pinks, these are old ones, which... I don't know, sometimes this happens with guava, you know. My wife likes this, it's kind of a veggie that makes like an okra kind of long, um, you know, you can cook and eat. But once it takes, the, the tree won't flower because there is no sun, it's kind of... Tikal guava. So this guava tree, uh, when we bought it, it had a root problem. I think guavas get that root nematode or something, uh, so it, it's still recovering. It's, we planted ageratum, which is supposed to prevent. It's, ageratum is a plant which helps with nematodes if you plant around. But it's, it's grown much, but it still seems like still struggling. It still looks like it's one of those uh, immunodeficient you know, people who get all kinds of diseases just because they do this. It seems like that root, root is kind of the problem here once the root nematode takes over. I have two white sapotis that are multi-grafted here, four or five different varieties are there. Wow. So wow. I, we'll, we tried white sapotis last year from California. We love them both, me and my wife, we love them so much. So uh, we found out what varieties do well here because sometimes, you know, California, there are different varieties that do well. So I have a different ones like Bonita Spring, Super Sweet. I have a Subel that Excalibur propagates. I have a Young Guns Gold and a Fair Haven, so we'll see how they do. This is kind of our, when you have a big area with a lot of trees, you know, palm trees and cabbage palm, which takes so much money to cut, we just left it, but the leaves keep on falling, so we use them to dump here, and um, the system here is that 
I can lift this up and down there will be rich uh, decomposed because there is a net after this. So everything that decomposes passes through that net and goes to the bottom area and the bottom area you can harvest. It's like a nice uh, composted material there. Uh, that's another dump area. This is the old... And here I have planted all the black Suriname cherries. They already fruited this year so I... Um, this is after fruiting, probably some are just dried out already, but this is a row of black Suriname cherries. Seems like they grow fast, they probably are trees, so <laughs> have to keep on pruning them to keep them small. Uh, that's pretty much it. What's in your middle here? Uh, this may or may not stay here. It, it is a plant from Nepal. I brought it from there. It's, it's called orange jessamine. It, it becomes like a small medium sized tree, probably like 12 feet tall, and white fragrant flowers. Um, Very nice. Uh, Very nice. Hi, come here. I haven't shown you the Jabatikaba area. <laughs> okay. People don't like bamboos. These are edible bamboos, the Timor Black. Uh, and we needed something to, to give like... When they were planted, nothing was here. We just wanted to make it look nicer at that time. So now they have become huge and I may trim them down 10-12 feet. Probably uh, they help with windbreak as well. So here is more of a trestle that you built over there, yeah, right? This will be veggie vines now. We have okay. like uh, different kind of winged beans and you know all this. And where do you get this? You just uh, got yeah. this and you just cattle got the long panels. sheet and bend it over, huh? Yeah, cattle panels. They bend over pretty well. How many feet were they? are they? I think they are 15 feet long I mean and four feet wide and 15 long and uh, it's pretty much good and you got to tie to rebar here yes there are like this see the rebars here we haven't had a major like a hurricane like situation after we started all this project so that would be an experiment how they do at that time uh, okay so this was Zabitikaba area they don't get all day sun so this is a grimal people call it grimal I call grimal it first year uh, in the ground it did nothing and I was like what's going on I know Jabatikabas are usually root bound in the pot because everyone wants to keep them in the pot forever so when I got it it was like all the roots were entangled so I don't like this while I plant I try to move all the roots out and it kind of was not happy for a while because the roots were touched but lately it's flushing all around so I think now the roots are getting there next year probably it will fruit same here, I have two, two grimals. The red hybrid already fruited. Uh, and you know, they, they, they get the rainwater. The rainwater comes from there. And uh, I don't water them at all. They're, they are like any other plants. I do not water them at all. <laughs> Probably they already found water down there. And up there I have a thick layer of pine bark mulch which gives them a acidic um, medium there. Uh, I have planted a sour soap there, a golden sour soap that's like an Australian variety. Color is gold color. And this one is uh, from Indonesia. I haven't had the fruit yet but it, it's an Indonesian variety. It's supposed to be big. This is a Miami one that um, the guy that Julia, Lara Farms yeah. propagates. And that's from Yucatan, Mexico. So different, and then I have multigrafted that tree. There is one, the one behind you see the blue colored leaves. You see the leaves yep. are different. That, that's, that has a blue colored leaves that's coming from Hawaii. It's called the Whitman fiberless, supposed to have no fiber. So um, this is my area. I think with the, close to the house, hopefully they'll be protected uh, against the cold when during the cold. This already doesn't need protection. I don't think we protected last winter. But this one, were, I had to cover it, and next year probably will not protect anyone. Who else? So this is our. Uh, this is this is not for fruit trees. It's more for like a fragrant area where people come and hang around. It's more like the front of your house. You want to look beautiful. You don't want to look like a forest of fruit trees. <laughs> so this is our uh, pond area. Uh, for you know like a uh, beauty contemplation sitting around my eventual plan is to give it shade uh, like natural shade not like putting a you know cloth or something but with a tree I couldn't find I'm still looking for a tree that would 
that could be grown here and gives a canopy there. I planted, this didn't work. It's a, it's a, it's a jasmine of some sort. I think it's a crepe jasmine. I have a Michelia alba. It's like a Michelia, it's a fragrant. I thought this will become a tree, but this also did not. All right, everybody, that was this amazing tour. Saki, thank you so much for inviting us out to your house. Uh, this is wonderful. And as I've been telling you all, it's different challenges, but also a lot of fun. Uh, as if you have a farm versus you have a residential area. I've shown you some people that have combination of both. But this property was amazing and you're doing a great job with it. So thank you for thank showing you us. Thank you for coming by. And hopefully it will inspire people like us who think that you, know, you can't do much in a residential lot to start having fruit trees. But I would say just go out there and start trying fruits first. Because if you uh, don't like, you don't plant. But if you like them, go and try find ways. Because even in a small space like this, you can have everything that you want. It just needs more research and a little bit of love and work into developing your soil. So that once the soil is rich, you can do ultra high density. You can plant a lot of things once the soil is rich. So I think that's what I would want everyone to know from our channel that, you know, Focus on soil health. That's that's my. Uh, anything will grow once the soil is rich. So let's let that be our closing. Uh, All right. Story. And if you love my channel, you're gonna love his channel because he has so many great educational videos of how to do this and how to graft. And I've learned a good amount of things from his channel. And I want you to too. So I'm putting a link to his channel below the video. And if you are in the local North Miami area, he does have some trees for sale. That's not his main purpose here. He just wants to grow food that he can eat and nourish his family and make a beautiful place. But at the same time, besides doing those great educational videos, he has some trees for sale. So definitely contact him through the link below the video. His contact information is there and also his YouTube channel. Thank you again for having us come out. Everybody. All right, everybody, there it was. That was this amazing tour. And I actually, learned some things today on this tour and I hope you caught some of the things he said uh, about the soil. You know, we, we all have our different situations and we all do it our own way and that's how we learn and grow. And, and that's what I'm saying because there's not one place that will fit or one model that will fit every place, but there are some tips we can pick up. I really liked his, his suggestion or his tip about, uh, and he found out the hard way, when you get mulch from other places, they're not always gonna be that uh, healthy. Uh, you got to inquire where the trees came from if they use pesticides and other herbicides on the trees and also even even manure when you get cow manure you want to check it out you know well they you know you want to check these things out the best you can but sometimes you're gonna have to learn by error mistake but now that you know maybe consider getting your little molten tree and stuff so i have to do another video and maybe check that out because I want to get mulch, but I don't want to uh, get mulch from un unreliable sources. So very cool tip he gave there. Uh, definitely check out his channel if you're in the North Miami area. Contact him. He's really cool at uh, grafting. He's got a good thing with that. If you want to get some trees, uh, he'd be a guy I definitely would count on as a reliable source to get some. He doesn't have much right now. I'm sure in the future he will have more, but he does have some. So check him out. This is really cool. He built his own. He built his own everything here. He don't want to rely on somebody else. He did it himself, but he built his, these, I have concrete poles for, for growing dragon fruit, but they didn't look like this. He built his own little cool trellis here. Really nice. I like what he did there. And, uh, and, and I like everything he's done here. So uh, check it out. Uh, what he's done might work for your property and your situation. Maybe it won't. He's in a residential area and he's learning from his experience like we all are. So, and, and all people have different tastes. Some people like things, certain mangoes. Some people don't like other mangoes. I'm learning a lot. I'm learning a lot from uh, just going and making videos like this. And I, I pray you're learning a lot by, by watching these videos because it's such a fun learning experience. All right, everybody. Uh, and I'm just blessed that I can go around different houses and meet wonderful people. This community of people that are passionate about growing their own food and stuff. And every time after I make these videos, I like to go home and start implying some of the things I learned and checking out how that is. All right, everybody, that's it. Put your comments and questions below. Thank you for watching and have another uh, blessed day and keep growing.